Okay, I'm back. So this is the next video. Uh, I think this is probably part two now, but I it might change sequence later. But this is the next part anyway of the developer diary video, the the making of Clear Shooting Sniper X, which is what I'm calling it right now. The name might change a little bit later though. So, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, the name I always like to keep a little bit flexible, you know, in the beginning and just give the project a kind of generic name. Uh, I've just called it Clear Vision here because it's uh, inspired by the game Clear Vision on iPhone. So, okay, so I just got some blood patches uh, imported here. And these things, these are pretty cool. I, got, I used these blood patches in a game before that we didn't actually finish. Um, but this should work pretty well for our for our purposes here. So I'm just going to change the settings so that it's optimized and they're not massive. Um, okay, we'll reduce it down and see how this goes. We're targeting iPhone initially and then we're going to bring this onto Android, uh, probably on the Amazon App Store first. Um, okay, so blood patch one, I've got to make this into a material. And this material is going to go here. Okay. Ah, why do I have a blood patch one? Ah, it seems I already have. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Okay, so I already have a blood patch uh, game object, which is fine. That's not a problem at all. Uh, because what I did was this is actually. When I build uh, new projects, I just copy over the old project, uh, and then I have all of the resources and and scripts and textures and everything ready for the for the new project. And it kind of saves starting all over because all of the Unity settings are the same as well. So it could be it's a two D game, the scene is already optimized, the camera is already set up, and so on. Uh, so it makes things a lot faster. So what we want to do is I've got my blood patch. Um, And what we want to do is create a new game object that will contain all of that blood, bones, particle effects, the, the kind of explosion effects. So let's test one out. Let's call this um, Blood splat and body parts. Okay. Okay. And then what we want to do is give that. Okay, so we're going to call this blood splat. Uh, this this is just the this blood splat here that I've just dragged in there as a child is a uh, is basically just a, uh, a a single plane piece of geometry uh, just a flat square as you can see there. Now we want the blood splat to be persistent. We don't want the blood patch or blood splat as we're calling it here to be persistent. We don't want that to go away. Um, Hmm, what's happened here? Oh, okay, let me... Okay, blood splat, I think... Oh, yeah, I, I dragged a, a prefab, not the actual... Not the material, so... There we go, so... Yeah, okay, that looks gory and horrible. That's exactly what we want. So this blood patch, let's just move this over. This is the game object, and I'm just going to move that into the background again, along with the particle effect that we started to create over here so that it's behind everything and it's not gonna get in the player's way and um, I do like camera splats and, and things coming down that's possible I'll look into that as well but I don't want to do that too much just because we will obscure the, the player's vision and part of the point is that um, uh, they can, they're going to have to continue playing fast, they're going to have to shoot things faster and faster and faster, and so we don't really want to get in the player's way. 
We don't want to obscure their vision. So, what's going to happen is this blood, we want this blood splat and body parts object to instantiate in the scene. And what I mean, that's going to appear in the scene. But we don't want it to disappear because as the scene goes on, let's say the player is playing for three, four, five minutes, I want that blood splat to just add up and add up and add up and add up and have loads of blood splats everywhere, which is why we want to keep those blood splats kind of optimized and small and not too uh, and not heavy because basically it will it will start to have a memory impact. So whilst we're on that, I'm actually going to reduce this down to the lowest setting. Now you see because it's blood and it's kind of fuzzy and generic, it might not be a problem, it might look fine. Kind of like smoke or particle effects, they can be extremely low resolution, but it doesn't matter so much because they're kind of blood gets smeared and so on. Not that I'm an expert with blood, of course. Okay, so that's that's looking fine. It looks like that will appear. Now, what we're going to do is I've just imported some bones as well. So I, I got a bones texture that I used before in our game, uh, Chick's, Chick's Revenge. Okay, so particle bone. There we go. And these characters are kind of robotic. I mean, they they just can they are just squares, and they look fairly, you know, very very basic in fact. But uh, I think it might look kind of funny and interesting if, if bones kind of explode out of these things. Um, I don't think it matters too much really if we're going away from reality or why would these things contain bones if they just look like robots. Uh, I don't think people are going to critique that one too much. Um, okay, so let's just set this up as an alpha blended texture, and that should... Yeah, that's very, very low res. Okay. And we're going to set this as the material for these particles here. So there we go. And as we can see there, that's pretty big for a bone right now, so we're going to reduce this down to... Let's say 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. So we're setting the minimum and the maximum size. And just so we've got some uh, animation going on, so let's just set a, one, a random world velocity in the x direction. Okay, and what we want it to do is be one shot, which just means an explosion. We don't want it to be like a consistent. Uh, uh, flow of bones, we want it to just appear once. And the other things we want to do is we want to auto destruct, which makes the particle um, uh, components, makes the particle object disappear after it's finished spraying the particles. And we don't really need to animate any color. What it means is we don't need to change any color or add any uh, fading effects. We just want the, the bones to appear and then go off the screen, and then once they're below the screen, they'll just disappear and then that frees up the memory. So I'm actually going to put the particles and bones as a child of this blood splat object. And we're going to set it to 0, 0, 0. Which might not work right now because I need to test it. And so I just need to move it slightly out of the way whilst we do test it. Okay. Mm, let's just set this to 2 seconds, the minimum, the minimum and the maximum. What we do want to do is set it in a in a, a wire velocity, but we want it to come down with gravity. So what we're going to see is it come there we go. So see it starts to come down, but we need it to be a lot faster. So we're going to crank up this gravity, probably to minus ten. I think that's real world gravity there. I think that is. I think that's how it simulates inside of Unity. So world velocity, we want to set it off high initially. Okay, and what we're going to do is add a random y velocity so that it doesn't all go up in just one line. Okay. It's fine. We might want to make these just a little bit bigger, I think. Let's make this to 0 0.6. Now we do want them to spin, so we want a random angular velocity, and let's say this is 200, 
Uh, there you go. You can see that's kind of starting to, to look a little bit better now. Uh, they're always going to face the camera as well. We're never going to have the plane turning on its side so it just it appears like a, it disappears and then reappears. Particles always face the camera, which is uh, which is good, which is what we want. And this kind of the particles here, you know, it's it's just it's just a case of kind of tweaking them and seeing what works best, and you know, playing around with all the parameters. Uh, I've not actually used Unity three point five yet, which is um, which is the one above this. This is three point four, and I believe the particle system was updated to a new one. And uh, it's I think it's a lot better because I. This one is a little bit limited at the moment. Uh, you can't have particles, spawning particles, which is kind of cool. So, for example, if you wanted to make a firework effect, you couldn't have like one one firework so shooting up and then spraying off, and then off those ones spray other ones. Uh, that would be have that have to be something that you wrote yourself. Okay. So I think this this looks okay. Um, I might need to speed this up, and it might just be appearing slow to me right now because of uh, because of the recording. But I think I think we're doing okay there. Um, maybe maybe six is too many. Let's just try uh, between four and five, so it'll randomize it for each of the every time it spawns, it'll it'll randomize between four and five bones. And I think that might be okay. I'm also thinking we might have to have the background completely white as well. That might work. That might work. If I make the characters black and then with sort of dark grey arms is what I'm thinking. Um, okay, so let's just set this down to zero. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to copy these bones. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy these bones. And I'm going to call these particles body parts. Now, the body parts are not going to be bones. These are just going to be like squares because these characters are made up of squares. So I actually use a square which is called Splint. Um, just because I had originally named it like that in another project. Now we don't want to, we only want to have this as two, in fact we only want to have two because it's just made up, the characters as you can see here are just made up of a top and a lower body. Uh, so min emission and maximum emission is going to be two two. Hmm. So it's possible what we could do is I'm um, I'm thinking here that we could have the the bones blast out the blood splats on the back but then the the body and the the the, uh, the body parts like the the upper and lower torso which are these just these two squares and then the two arms which are just basically two grey rectangles appear as physics objects and just sort of stumble on the floor and fall along the floor that's possible possible because the bones are already sort of splattering up in the air hmm. it means it would need to be a, uh, an instantiated physics object okay okay so I'm just gonna pause the recording there and I'm gonna come back after I've thought about this for a while because I don't want everyone just to sort of I don't want the video to be 10 minutes of me thinking what to do, but I hope this has given you guys a good insight of how how uh, game development works, though, and, and you know, I hope it is a little bit interesting to see me uh, develop the game that you're now playing. I'm, I'm not, I don't know from this date when it's going to be available, um, but hopefully you're enjoying to see how this game is all put together, and so uh, stay tuned for the next video, and I'll, I'll be back soon.